What's going on guys? Welcome back to another update for the week. And unfortunately, this is going to be one of those bad updates. Uh, we had a mini crash in the tank that pretty much wiped out uh, all of the SPS. And a lot of the uh, mushrooms here are not looking too happy. Some of them are looking okay, some of them are not looking too happy. I'm trying to go through and show you guys the, the chaos and just the destruction of what happened to the corals and really what caused uh, this crash. I'm just going to kind of show you guys clips and bits of the corals here while I kind of talk about what happened. So what happened was uh, we had a fish die in the tank and unfortunately I did not notice the fish being dead or gone until it was pretty much too late. All right, so the one fish that died in the tank was actually the newest fish that was added to the tank or the most recent one, which was the wrasse, the fairy wrasse. And you know, for the most part, he was doing fine. And then all of a sudden, like one day I was looking at the tank and I was like, where, where is the, where's that fish? I thought he jumped, didn't jump. So the body must've been in here somewhere and decomposed and something happened where basically ammonia spiked and nutrients spiked in the tank. You know, that one fish dying shouldn't have been that big of an issue, you know. You know, obviously you'll get algae blooms, you'll get a little bit of like, you know, nuisance noose, algae or whatever, and that's exactly what happened in the tank and what really like drove me to kind of look to see what was wrong and, you know, I found out that the fish was gone. So that one fish dying, de decomposing into the tank here, led to a string of things happening. That led to a bunch of snails slowly dying. Um, and each of the snails, nose decomposed, and it really just compounds. So I noticed that a bunch of snails just kind of went up from the sand and just like rolled over and just died. And then so that's when I was just like, uh oh, we need to start doing some water changes and removing some of these snails because it's just adding, you know, too much nutrients into the tank and we're just having a bunch of ammonia into, you know, the tank now. So here is where I was kind of planning for the future with this change here. So I made the move to switch from Fritz uh, salt, the blue bucket. So that's where it's like 8.5 ALK to the Red Sea uh, Pro, which is the ALK is like at 12. Um, now, the reason why I wanted to make that switch was because I noticed, you know, a lot of the corals are starting to grow in. They're growing, you know, pretty decently. And with a higher ALK, you know, it helps them grow a little bit faster um, and the consumption on uh, the elk was starting to increase where you know my uh calc glosser was you know kind of going up pretty high so i figured you know if i switch to the salt that's higher every time i do a water change weekly it'll help you know boost the elk a little bit where you know the calc glosser isn't working as hard you know it'll consume that first and then it'll go to the calc glosser that's my you know thought process in terms of switching to the salt you know, for me, I don't do much water change every week. It literally is like maybe a two or three uh, percent water change. So it's like a five gallon water change. And it's just really a very small water change. So even with that high alk in the salt, that shouldn't, you know, do really anything to the corals just because that fluctuation might be like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 increase in, uh, in alk with that higher alk um, salt. So for me, that's not a problem. And, and the thing was, I was, already switched to this salt, you know, weeks, if not months, um, prior to having this crash here. You know, once I noticed the tank was kind of crapping out, I went and removed all the snails, uh, tried to look for the dead fish, couldn't find the dead fish, and pretty much uh, did water changes. And the problem is, with a salt that is with higher alk, you're going to basically increase the alk slowly as you're doing the water change in the tank, and that's exactly what happened where I was doing, you know, I wasn't doing large water changes, all right? I was still doing my five gallon water changes, but I was doing them a little bit more frequently to help with whatever's in the tank to remove, you know, the ammonia or whatever that's causing, you know, a lot of these snails to die. And so I was doing a water change one day, I waited like, you know, at least one or two days and I did another five gallon water change, for example. And every time I did the water change, it bumped up the elk a little bit higher. And so it got to the point where the tank was getting abnormally high, right? So I normally try to keep my elk around 8.5. It went all the way up to like 9.6, 9 point something. On top of what's happening with the tank and the snails where it's just continuously dying, the elk's higher, it's stressing out the SPS. 
And so pretty much we have like a mini tank crash where all the SPS bleach pretty much overnight as the elk raised like over nine point something. And so now like the water changes aren't helping, it's making things worse. And so yeah, and so that's where we're at right now. Kind of briefly saw like, you know, a bunch of the the corals and in terms of what the status and what they look like they pretty much some of them are like okay some of them are like halfway between dying and some of them are just straight up like just shriveled and dead and you know for example like the montes the montes are starting to bleach and they are pretty hardy the digis are like losing their color they're not bleach but they're losing their colors um the sps the acros are all like bleach every one of them except for the one torque the organ torque the blue one that's the only one that's alive. I lost like pretty much all, except for the green slime. The green slime is kind of semi-bleach as well. So here's some of the things I did uh, to help try to fix this tank here. I swapped carbons um, to try to pull out any organics or whatever that's in the tank. Um, activated carbon, so I switched that. I switched back to Fritz, uh, the blue box. So now that I'm doing the water changes, it's at least at 8.5 where I you know, want it to be at. And now with these water changes, because it's so high, in terms of alk, it's gonna slowly bring it back down. I turned off my calc glosser because um, that was assuming that, you know, everything was alive, you know, consuming all this alkalinity that's in the tank. And now everything's kind of shriveled up and they're not really consuming as much. I turned it off so that way we can kind of get a stable, like, decrease in the alkalinity. And once the alkalinity is kind of close to like 8.5 again, I'll turn it back on slowly. Um, to figure out you know where I need to increase that back to because you know everything is pretty much bleach and I don't think the consumption rate is going to be the same anymore pretty much back to like ground zero or you know the first day pretty much because everything looks like it's not looking happy so here's the concerning part about everything so these snails here are some new snails I have bought recently and I put them in here and they didn't want it they didn't move they're alive they literally just didn't want to burrow so this has been like maybe like a day day and a half and they've just chilled there and these guys are supposed to be like sand sifters and they're supposed to be buried under um yeah so that's a little concerning right because the elk's so high they're not even wanting to move um so i'm gonna have to make sure you know pretty much every day to make sure that we're not having decaying bodies of new you know snails adding to this uh issue here the urchins the urchins are pretty much like they're alive Right, but they're just like for example this guy here. He's just sitting there. They're like they're just they're not wanting to move. They're just chilling because like they're like I don't know if the parameters are all whack and they just don't want to do anything. They just want to sit there. Um, but yeah. So I'm hoping that we don't have any more chain effects where we have a much more of these guys just dying left and right. So like we have some that are, are fine, like this Godzilla. This Godzilla is opening up fine and it's like nothing happened to it, right? So some of these guys are okay, some of them aren't. Um, and we're just going to have to see what the final outcome and the final, you know, destruction <laughs> is gonna be in the tank. So I went back to putting the divider in place. We have the corals on this side here. Clams are looking like, you know, nothing happened to them, but the frags of the digis are all kind of semi-bleached. Um, chalice though, the chalice here doesn't look like it was phased. The Monty here is pretty much bleach. That guy's bleached over here. And this side is supposed to be a refugium, along with this semi-refugium. Um, we're having a lot of hair algae growth. Uh, the blue, Hypnia is not no longer blue. It's like kind of melting back a lot. That's what we have left and that's mainly just hair algae to be honest. Um, so yeah, so that's not looking good either. So we don't really have a, a refugium other than these guys here really going because those guys are pretty much dead over here. I put these filter stocks back in here. Let me kind of push that down. Put it back in here to kind of grab anything. Um, I, 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 moved, I made this, this transition or this change because I wanted to have uh, this basically have a filter sock so we can kind of catch a lot of this algae and debris that's kind of floating around in the tank um, without having to swap it in and out. So we'll probably keep it this way for a little bit and, and we'll see what happens. 
we lost we did lose like maybe a couple mushrooms like that whole mushroom rock back here is pretty much gone which is unfortunate and then we had a, a new mushroom in here that I got and I was going to show you guys that's in the cage that pretty much melted back uh, so that's unfortunate um, and then we had a couple of these guys um, like for example like look at this this is so sad my OG bounce that's just shriveled up right now um, yeah this sucks and then back here was a rock with just a bunch of mushrooms that used to just be open the superman mushrooms and it's just all showed up and then there there was that mystery acro that was growing so well for 10 bucks it's gone that's the only one that's surviving these are the digis the digi back there look at that it used to be like a nice green and red in the back and it's just kind of this pale color this guy just bleached recently which is sad there's the uh, PC Rainbow Dead Bleach. And these guys, they lasted forever too, you know? Like, at least like six, seven, eight months. They're doing so good. And then here's my green Slimer. This guy was a trooper. He was so bright, and now he's kind of like faded. Same thing with the Manny Pacquiao. That guy lasted forever, and now he's just bleached. So that's so sad. So, I'm gonna try to stabilize the tank. See what happens um, and see if some of these acros will kind of get the color back which I highly doubt because they literally just bleach like over overnight so um, with that happening that fast it's it's most likely they're not gonna make it or not gonna not gonna come back I know this guy here the Monty's I've, I've had that guy completely like turn white like that and just come back ever you know slowly not to worry, to worry about that. The Monty will definitely come back. They're pretty hardy. Same thing with the uh, Digis. The Digis will just kind of like be this pale color for a while and come back. So I'm not sure about the Acros. So the Acros, I have not seen one bounce back for me yet. So except for maybe the uh, the Green Slimer. Like that, that that thing is pretty much like really, really unkillable. Um, and these guys pretty much didn't, didn't get phased up here so yeah there are some of them that didn't get phased and some of them did like this guy back here starting to have a little bit of white spots but yeah oh and then i moved this guy from the corner here over here because i was housing some of these uh sunbursts in here and they, they weren't getting enough light so i moved them over here to get some light but obviously with the tank kind of just crapping out these guys are kind of shriveled up even like the main one that's normally pretty big and open they're kind of shriveled up in the back there so, yeah, that sucks. That's where we're at, guys. All the other fish in here are looking okay. They're doing decent. It's just uh, the corals are taking a hit and um, we're set back again. So, yay. We're back to step one. All right, guys, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. Like always, nothing, guys. Peace.